Good evening, everyone. We're here for the Kern Cog Public Workshop. Tonight, we have the California Public Utilities Commission, CPUC, introductory presentation by Mr. Cody Naylor. And he is going to be ready to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for letting me introduce myself. If you don't mind, because I have a PowerPoint, I was going to set up over here. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Cody Naylor. I am with the California Public Utilities Commission. I work in the commission's news and information office. I just really appreciate you letting me come and introduce myself to you today. I'm here today because I'm the commission's dedicated contact for Kern County and all the cities and its borders. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about what that means. So I suspect that many of you have heard about the Public Utilities Commission at some point and are familiar with some aspects of our, our regulation, but if you'll indulge me anyway, we are a state agency that regulates the rates and conditions of service for investor-owned electric, natural gas, communications, water, and sewer utilities. We grant the operating authority to these utilities, as well as to household good moving companies, prearranged transportation services like limousines and tour buses, to the railroads and to rail transit agencies, and the commission also regulates and enforces safety for utility and rail system operations. Locally, entities regulated by the commission include, but are not limited to, PG&E in Southern California Edison, California Water Service Company, BNSF, AT&T, and transportation companies like Uber and Lyft, which I'll be discussing in more detail later in my presentation. Um, we, as a state agency, are striving to do a much better job of engaging you as local leaders. That's why my main roles at the commission are to notify you of opportunities to participate in our proceedings and to facilitate your involvement. We're trying very hard to make it easy for local governments to be closely engaged in our work and uh, my main responsibility is to ensure that happens for you. This slide here lists just a few examples of some ongoing commission proceedings that may be of interest to your communities, such as examining how to increase access to affordable energy for disadvantaged communities in the San Joaquin Valley, California Water Service Company's rate setting proceeding, and establishing a priority list of projects to improve existing at-grade railroad crossings. So in addition to notifying you of opportunities to get involved in our decision-making process, a big part of my job is informing you of commission decisions that may impact your communities. And since this body is particularly focused on transportation issues, I just want to briefly highlight one of the newest entities under our regulation, which are commonly referred to as ride-sharing companies, but which under our regulations, which were the first in the nation, are called transportation network companies, or TNCs. And on this slide, I have the definition under our regulation of what a TNC is, and uh, the logos there are examples of some of the companies which we've permitted for these operations, including Lyft, Uber, Sidecar, Wings, and there are other similar providers. The commission created and enforces our regulations over TNCs. Our initial regulations were enacted back in September of 2013, and we addressed general operating requirements, driver and vehicle safety requirements, and minimum insurance. This slide here lists some of the requirements on TNCs, including that they can't accept street hails like a taxi would do, that drivers must use their personal vehicles versus a commercial vehicle, they must undergo, undergo criminal background checks, and that TNC vehicles must also pass safety inspections annually and be insured at specified levels. In this slide here, you can see that for uh, any period in which a driver has a passenger, they're on their way to pick somebody up, they're required to have a million dollars minimum death, personal injury, or property damage insurance, which was a, a statutory requirement that we implemented um, last year. So this particular industry continues to expand and affect many aspects of the transportation sector, and our regulations continue to develop to address emerging issues. Now, when I say this, this is a huge understatement. Uh, the 
level of interest and some controversy around TNCs continues to be very high. In fact, I'd say at every commission meeting that we have, which is about every two weeks we have a voting meeting, we get representatives from the taxi industry and the rideshare industry commenting about either how glad they are that the commission has facilitated their existence or how angry people are that these services exist at all. Um, they're expanding quickly. Uh, my understanding is they're op they operate here in Bakersfield, and uh, we expect that throughout uh, other parts of the state they will continue to uh, to grow and expand. And our regulations are, are, are close uh, in tow. In fact, uh, we have a proposed decision to expand some regulations over these particular companies. Uh, right now it's out for uh, stakeholder and public comment, and I would say probably in the next few months we should expect uh, a decision to go before the commission for a vote to expand and refine some of our regulations over this industry. So if you or others ever have a question about the commission, its work, or any entity that we regulate, or if you just want to deliver a message to the right decision makers at the agency, I'm your single point of contact. I'm here to help. The commission's also integrally involved in saving Californians money on their electric, gas, and telephone service through our regulation of those industries. We oversee numerous consumer assistance programs, and we work very hard with our partners in the utilities to connect eligible people with them. Listed on this slide very quickly, the California Alternate Rates for Energy Program, or CARE, is an income-based discount of about 30% on electric and natural gas service. The Lifeline Program is an income-based discount on landline or wireless telephone service. Um, you may have heard this referred to as the infamous Obama phone program. It's on the federal side for a uh, discounted or free uh, cell phone, but the commission administers that program here in California too. The Deaf and Disabled Telecommunications Program facilitates phone communications, including free assistive devices and call relay services for people with disabilities, which limit their ability to use the telephone. Now, addi in addition to helping people save money, if you or residents of your communities have questions or complaints about their utility bill or service, please let us know. The Commission's Consumer Affairs Branch can work with you and others to answer those questions and specifically address those complaints. I also want to offer myself as a resource to you and to your communities to deliver information about safety around utility and railroad infrastructure, as well as consumer protection and fraud, fraud prevention, especially if you're having community events and you're looking for somebody to participate to, to share information about um, resources and safety. On this slide is a contact information for our Consumer Affairs Branch. Uh, I just want to really emphasize how useful this resource is. Um, I'm really talking about if people have had uh, uh, a lot of their utility bill add up, they haven't been able to pay it off in a while, and they're facing shut off, give the Commission a call. We can prevent your utility, or at least delay it from cutting off service, and we can work you know, to set up a, a way to, to pay it back. And uh, a lot of people just don't know that when they're, they're right there at the edge that the state has resources available to help right away. So I want to get a little further into the consumer protection and fraud prevention area because telecommunications fraud in particular is a very popular topic because it's so common and so pervasive so I just want to mention a few examples today. Slamming is a type of fraud that occurs when a customer's telephone service, be it local or long distance, is changed to another company without the customer's permission. This denies a customer their right to choose their telephone provider. Now, on the face of it, it might not seem like a, a really big deal, especially if there's no associated change in a person's bill, their rates don't go up. But the problem with slamming is that you signed up with a company, that's who you pay for your service, they don't have the right to transfer you or sell your account to another provider. Uh, so slamming is very common, or more common in the landline uh, arena rather than wireless. Uh, but it is uh, uh, still a fairly common type of telecommunications fraud. Cramming 
occurs when unauthorized charges are put on a customer's a customer's bill. So I think a good way to think of this is like those advertisements you see on television telling you to text, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we'll send you your horoscope or enroll you into a contest. And usually there's some small charge uh, associated with that, uh, that text message. Uh, while a, a person may have, you know, authorized on a one-time basis that service, sometimes we find that customers will just have their bill, uh, they'll be billed another charge at random and without their permission. Um, sometimes companies will just sell off uh, utility customer numbers or uh, fraudsters will, you know, mine telephone numbers and they'll just try to uh, tack on bills and hope people don't notice or dispute it. Uh, cramming is very common in the cell phone, the wireless context, but fortunately um, through uh, some of the work of the Commission and the FCC, uh, third-party billing, which is you know when people charge a service onto your telephone bill, has gone down a lot because the telephone, the telecommunication carriers decided that because so much fraud was occurring, that it really wasn't in their interest to facilitate these kinds of transactions anymore. Although uh, they were making some money off of, of this third party billing, over time they decided that uh, their, uh, the fraud was getting too pervasive, too common, and it just uh, really needed to be curbed. And that's uh, fortunately the case today and about a year and a half ago is when that, that major change took place. Um, robocalling are something that mo a lot of us are pretty familiar with. Uh, robocalls are recorded messages that are delivered to your phone by an automatic dialing announcing device. Uh, one thing I just want to point out is that not all types of robocalling are illegal. Um, auto dialers can be used between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. if the recording is introduced by a live person and then the person who's called actually gives their consent to hear whatever that message is. Uh, if you or your constituents are receiving a lot of these calls, please feel free to refer them to me. We can help to get them on to the FCC do not call registry list if they're not already there. We can also help direct their complaint to the FCC. The FCC in these cases is the primary one who can help directly uh, address the consumer's complaint. Call forwarding is a way to transfer control of use of your telephone line to another number by dialing star 72 plus the area code and the telephone number. Scammers can use call forwarding to bill your phone line for calls that they make. Um, IRS scams and variants of it are basically fraudulent calls in which the caller tries to convince somebody to wire money or to send a prepaid debit card due to some emergency situation or maybe just through coercion, like saying that they're from the IRS and that money is owed and if they don't, there's going to be some immediate consequence. Call forwarding and IRS scams are much harder for the commission to prosecute. In fact, it's not something we can really do much about at all because they're primarily the result of people being tricked into doing something over the telephone versus an abuse of the telecommunications infrastructure itself. In these cases, contacting local law enforcement is really a customer's best option. When it comes to protecting yourself or others from against telecommunications fraud, my advice to consumers is always to check your telephone bill closely each month. A lot of times we have these auto bill pays set up and we don't act some people don't take the time anymore to actually look at their bill, but it should be fairly consistent month to month. So if something is a little bit off, it's definitely a good idea to check to make sure there's some unauthorized changes, you haven't been slammed or a something else isn't off about your normal bill. Uh, we also encourage people to avoid answering calls from telephone numbers that they don't recognize, but we also acknowledge that people still, there are people who don't have caller ID, they still have a landline, and, and when the phone rings, they, they pick it up. So for people who do uh, receive a, a call from an unrecognized number, we always just tell people don't press any buttons. It may seem, especially any buttons that have a symbol versus a number. There should be no reason to do that. Um, there should be really no context where you'd have to do that or, or, or receive instructions to do that from, from the person calling you. 
Um, so I think I have about five minutes for questions, but I really want to thank you for allowing me to introduce myself to you today. I also want to let you know that myself and some of our commissioners will be back in Bakersfield next month on March 22nd for a public forum to explain some major changes that will be occurring to residential electric rates over the next few years, including the introduction of a default time of use metering, as well as for a public participation hearing on California Water Service Companies general rate case, which is a rate setting proceeding. We really, really hope you'll consider attending these events on March 22nd here in Bakersfield at the Kern County Board of Supervisors Chambers. We also really hope that you can help us to get the word out to your communities about this event. Because these hearings, particularly about very big issues that are going to affect your communities in a very direct way. You can expect that I'll be in touch between now and then again to tell you about these events and to provide you updates and more information. But I just want to put this on your radar. Uh, March 22nd at 5 for the rate forum, and then 6.30, same day, same place, um, for our public participation hearing on California Water Service Company's rate case. That is the end of my presentation. I look forward to staying in touch, and I'm happy to try to answer any questions you have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming today, Mr. Naylor. Does anyone have any questions up here about the presentation? Um, I, I have a couple of uh, really quick ones. Uh, when you talked about the California Lifeline, uh, we noticed that they're set up in our community, too. Um, and this may or may not be something that you can answer, but it seems like when they came to the community, they rotate various places around with a out of their car uh, a setup. Is there any way to verify uh, that they are legitimately, legitimately affiliated with California Lifeline? Yes. Apologies. Yes, there is. The commission certifies carriers to, par to participate in the Lifeline program because effectively um, it's a, a subsidized program with public money, ratepayer money being used. So if there are particular companies that uh, you're aware of or your constituents are aware of that are operating in your community and you want to know, okay, is this a actually a lifeline, uh, a legitimate lifeline participator, we can check that. There okay, so we can make a phone call to you or email you that information? Yeah, I can get an answer for you very quickly. That's very helpful. And the, another quick question that I had uh, earlier in your presentation, you were talking about uh, utilities. And one of the things that I was going to ask you is how does the CPUC or do they even deal with municipal water companies if there's a municipal customer problem? No, our regulation is limited to investor-owned water utilities. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, anyone else have any questions at all? Thank you. Um, is there any good news for businesses as far as uh, rates? You have Mar yeah, March 22nd. Is there any good news for our business people uh, as far as and our cost has gone up tremendously in our business and stuff, but you know, with the economy and the oil industry and everything uh, uh, happening, it's going to struggle out there. And there's any really lifelines to, uh, um, how do you say, be politically correct. And I know I'm, I'm not a minority or anything, but I'm soon to become a minority, but is there anything for us that we can live, you know, uh, that goes some breaks or something? So do you mean specifically uh, electricity or gas or Le electric? Gang, uh, mainly electric. That's the biggest part. Gas mainly is a small electric. part of my operation, but, you know, uh, as far as natural gas. But any utilities in general for businesses, are there any lifelines to the people trying to, that's struggling through this hard economic times we're having in the last year and a half? Is there something in the future to help uh, rates so increasing, stabilize? Because you have that tier thing now. In my operation, I have, I have several businesses, but one of them's a restaurant. You just can't kick the customers out during lunchtime or your peak time. You know, <laughs> tell, you know, you know how, how you get around it. You know, I've done everything I can. To, we put those special lights. We have all the new, new stuff in, inside there to keep our costs down. But you're going to do so much. And my bill runs about 3200 a month. So for the hearing on March 22nd, they'll be discussing primarily residential electric rates because that was a big change that happened late last year. On the commercial side, I'm going to have to get back to you if there are any ongoing proceedings that are going to change the rates in the commercial sector. It sounds like for your businesses, you might already be on a time of use metering system yes, where the prices vary. Um, so 
I, I trade the evening is, let me get for back uh, lunchtime? I, I'll, I'll go ahead and pay the extra cost at nighttime if I can swap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the feedback that I am hearing is, uh, aside from the question, which is something I'll have to find out and get back to you, whether we're working on anything that's going to change uh, the, elect the commercial electric rates, PG&E, right? Is that what we're... Uh, uh, PG&E, yes. Okay. This banking sheet. Um, so let me find out about that. Um, the, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to get back to you because I just don't know. The commission has a lot of proceedings going on all the time, um, but uh, that should be a pretty easy answer to get for you. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate your presentation tonight, and I noticed you handed out some materials that we can look through and make available, and I'm sure we can get these online if we want to give those to our citizens. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If there's anything that catches your interest, I'll be happy to send a packet of uh, hard copy brochures. Oh, I have extras you. on the back table there that I think I'm just going to leave behind um, for, uh, for in case anybody else is interested. And uh, you can just expect to hear from me uh, in the future, and I'll be sending you more information and invitations to events that we're having in the region. Well, thank you again. Um, at this time, we will uh, take a break until 6.30 when the meeting starts. Good evening, everyone. I'm called to order the Kern Council of Governments Transportation Planning Policy Committee on Thursday, February 18, 2016, at 6:30 uh, this evening. Uh, Councilman Bob Smith will be leading us in the pledge from Bakersfield. Pledge to the greatest nation on the planet. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and, and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and Madam Clerk, could you roll call us, please? Here. 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 Present. Here. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, we're at the portion of the public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Uh, committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. I'm not hearing you. I'll speak louder. Will that work? I don't see the mic. Mm -hmm. there are I don't know. I can wing it. That's They're coming out. Um, Lieutenant Ian, oh, you want me to wait? Yeah. He, he. <laughs> Did I break it? No, we, uh, we did the sound check. We forgot to turn on again after. <laughs> <laughs> now it's you always begin. the little things. It is. It is. <laughs> Lieutenant Ian Silva, Kern County Sheriff's Office. I just wanted to give you our regular update on our litter enforcement and trash pickup contract that we have with your council. Um, as of this, uh, as of uh, February, uh, there have been a total of 104 job sites in the, that the Kern Cog work crews have uh, have worked on. We've had uh, 825 hours of detention deputy hours and 4,135 uh, 4, hours of inmate labor, cleaning up the sites that we've been targeting. That equates to roughly 280 miles of Kern County Highways beautified. That's for the entire contract period, cumulatively, I should point out. Some of the areas we've hit recently are Arvin, uh, Bakersfield, Button Willow, Delano, McFarland, Lost Hill, Shafter, Taft, Wasco. And I should point out we've hit several of those places several times during the course of the contract. For example, we've been to Delano 44 times, apparently. so. We've been there quite a bit. We've been at Wasco 15, so we've, we've been hitting some of these targeted areas where it's really needed more than once. We really appreciate that. And we're happy <laughs> to do it, sir. <laughs> um, 
In addition to the uh, litter and or the litter pickup project, we also do a, a vehicle enforcement contract uh, 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 project where we pull over vehicles and either give them warnings or citations for uncovered lo uh, loads or untarped loads. We've pulled over so far a total of 95 vehicles. Um, of these, we have had have a case disposition on 27 them, of them that equates to $12,822 in fines. That it, uh, 61 vehicles have been giving warnings. And if you'll recall, we give them, in addition to a warning, we also give them a tarp so they can actually go ahead and cover up the load right then and there. And we have about four uh, citations that are still pending in court. Just wanted to give you that brief update. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer what I can. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone up here have any questions or anyone in the audience have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any other uh, public comments? Yes, sir. Sal Moretti, um, City of Bakersfield Superintendent. Chairwoman, members of the council, um, I wanted to come here every so often and uh, haven't been here for a while, but I did want to come here and say thank you for your support of the litter program. Working with the uh, Sheriff's Office, we also have the, you've also supported the program with the Bakersfield Homeless Center through the city where we're able to get the, um, all the freeways in the city cleaned up every three weeks. It's good news on the, on the side of the homeless population. 50 people are working right now. Your program started um, a whole nother effort from different agencies. So now we have uh, city, water de city departments in involved. We have private sector companies involved. And uh, we also have new programs starting all the time. Just last week, uh, Downtown Business Association announced a new program where they were going to uh, utilize the homeless to clean up uh, downtown. And just before the end of the last year, we got a donation from uh, the Lazzarini Foundation, and they, uh, they're saying they want to see the bike trail a little bit cleaner. So this continues to grow, and it all started with you and with your, um, with your support of this program. So I just wanted to come and say thank you for that. Thank you very much, Sal. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to thank all of you. You all do a great job. Um, the freeways are, from a year ago, are, you can see the difference. And um, not only on, on those projects, but I'm also involved in uh, the neighborhood cleanup clean up around Williams School. And every month when we call you all out there, you send a couple trucks. You pick up the piles that we're, we're out there uh, uh, making for you guys. And I just want to thank you for the great job that you're doing. Thank you for those comments. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else have public comment? Yes, sir. Madam Chairwoman, if I may read a statement on behalf of Tanner Thompson in Bakersfield. Um, Tanner is asking for uh, quarterly financial reports for, uh, from Golden Empire Transit, specifically where the federal funds are going. And he further states, they're, discriminate, they're discriminating against me by ignoring my concerns. But as you can see, Hunter said that the Board of Directors will respond to every public comment in a timely manner. It's been a year with no response to any of my comments for the past year, which is not being proactive. And that is Mr. Thompson's statement. Thank you very much, sir. Do we, um, I look to you, Mr. Hakimi, on how we his comments are about Golden Empire, Golden Empire Transit. So he's just generally speaking. Agencies. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you. Bye bye. <laughs> Any other comments? Public comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll go to the consent agenda. Opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff, and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before uh, I'm sorry, the item before action is taken and all items will be a roll call vote. Anyone on the, the board or in the audience have any questions about any items on the consent calendar? Anyone? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to a roll call. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, looking for a motion? Motion on consent. Second. Okay, roll call. Yes. 
Yes. Bush? Yes. Pasquale? Yes. Wilkie? Yes. Cantu? Aye. Bauer? Yes. Pouch? Yes. Pryor? Yes. Wigman? Yes. Pouch? Yes. Miller? Yes. Farah? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Moving to item number five, 2016 Regional Transportation Improvement Program, RTIP revision. Mr. Stromalia. Thank you, Madam Chair and Directors. The 2016 fund estimate uh, was revised at the January 10th uh, California Transportation Commission meeting. And um, with their action, um, it requires that regions deprogram projects that are currently in the 2014 State Transportation Improvement Program. Um, the Kern Region's original 2016 uh, RTIP, or Regional Transportation Improvement Program, Capital Improvement Program, did not introduce new programming, but projects not yet constructed were carried forward. Uh, in response to the revised fund estimate, the California Transportation Commission adopted a new timeline and a county share target for uh, the various regions uh, in, in, in terms of deprogramming uh, uh, county shares. Uh, regions are required to submit revised RTIPs by February 26, which is coming up quickly. Uh, and just uh, so you understand, our actual target that was uh, provided to us was in the amount of 19.8 or almost $20 million. Uh, KernCog staff recommends that the US 395 Elantra Cartago uh, project uh, up in Mono County, as well as State Route 14 Freeman Gulch Widening Segment 1 project be deprogrammed for a total of $22 million. Uh, and um, this would affect both uh, the construction phases for both of these projects. Um, that information is provided as well in attachment A. Um, the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee has reviewed this item and they do recommend uh, that you approve uh, staff's request. So our action tonight uh, specifically is that we ask you to approve attachment A and to direct staff to submit the uh, revised 2016 Regional Transportation Improvement Program, Capital Improvement Program to the Commission uh, by their February 26, uh, 2016 deadline. And so that does conclude my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, just thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean, I don't like the news, but uh, right. the question that I have is, and I, I talk with Mr. Hakimi and, and we've had other discussions. Concerns that I have are, I've used the word shelved before on projects, and these, though I understand, I understand where we, how we got to where we are today, um, these are also very important projects. And at some point, absolutely. Uh, and, and at some point, what my concern is, is that this will be shelved, and then at some point, it will go away. And then you'll have to re-justify these projects into the future because they'll now be competing with other projects that will be put forth. Uh, so it's not going to be a, a project where we'll say, okay, well, we'll just, just this will be priority A and B once we get money. That's not how this is going to work. And I think we need to understand that. And as we move forward, if the funding for um, capacity improving projects, STIP, all these projects come forward, we're going to see, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that we're going to see more of this. Uh, without a way to, and then they'll just go away. And th this is, in this particular instance, I speak on, uh, I, I know Ms. Uh, that uh, Ridge Cash can speak for themselves, but I look at it from another stand, uh, another way. Uh, it affects their side on 395, it, is, it affects Inyo County, uh, and it affects the ability to have more capacity heading north on highways 14 and 395. And that affects our ability for economic development into the future and, and things such as that. So those are the concerns that I wanted to make sure that I brought out. We have discussed this, and I repeat myself in saying I understand how we got here today. Uh, but it is concerning nonetheless. Uh, anyone else have any comments or questions or concerns? Or Do you have some? Yes, sir. Um, hi, my, na my name is Brian Winsgrade. I'm from District 9 in Bishop um, for Caltrans. Hi. Um, I'm coming here with um, Having been working with um, CT, CTC, or I'm sorry, with staff um, both in Inyo, Mono, and KernCog, um, Inyo and Mono asked me to come here to um, voice their support of continuing the four-laning. Freeman Gulch is 
ready for construction to go to construction this summer. Um, with the freeing up of Elantia shares, they are ready to step forward and help meet your defunding target. <clears throat> and to go about doing this, their proposal is that um, with the recension of Elantia funds and pushing it out to the future, that frees up about 8.85 million that would apply to your um, de um, deletion target of 19.8. With that, they would like to propose leaving the programming of Freeman Gulch intact and by pooling their deletion targets amongst Inyo Mono and Kern County, they could m meet their target goal. Um, I've discussed this with headquarters of proposal. They are of the opinion that, that they don't care how it's met if another region wants to cover it, that's uh, the proposal, the concept is okay to them. And they're, they're in Yomono are committed to, you know, they, first of all, thank you for the continued support for these MOU projects. They are important to the area and um, both the travelers from all over the country. And it's a, it's a interregional route, the only one on the eastern side of the Sierra that provides good movements to northern Nevada and, and Idaho, as far as Idaho. So. Um, that's the proposal that they wanted me to come forward with and bring down here, that they wish to continue this next step on this corridor, which would be the Freeman Gulch four lane. Well, that's encouraging. How do we, how do, we do that, Mr. Stramalia? Thank you, Brian. Thank um, you, yes. We are very aware of Inyo and Mona's offer. Um, a couple of things first. Um, what we want to make clear is that the memorandum of understanding as it stands and as it's been published in our original RTIP stands um, as it is with no changes. And so should the California Transportation Commission staff decide that this would be a good thing, we very much would uh, support it with the understanding that we're not going to be able to commit to uh, backfilling the so-called RIP funding that was used to do that. It's a great um, offer that Inyo and Mono is making, and so we really uh, defer to uh, the commission's ability to follow through on the on the request. So we certainly will not recommend, you know, getting in the way of that. So we're happy to know that that's something they want to do. Right. We we recognize that that's. That's very important um, roadway for many people. Uh, people just traversing even through California, getting to other locations, use that quite a bit. Um, and it's, it's something we're greatly concerned about for the future. And then the concerns that I mentioned earlier, if you have to reprioritize that, st you're basically starting all over with the exception of what I understand to be the architectural work that's done, archeological work that's been done. Yes, so in regards to that, um, we will continue working to get it ready to list. Um, they are not stopping work on the project. Mm -hmm. They are rescinding the construction funding. Um, what our plans are is to continue seeking funding sources wherever that may be, whether it be back in this program. You know, we've seen um, this project has gone through many um, uh, funding opportunities and it just wasn't in the place that we could take advantage of it, like ERA, you know, bond money and things like that. So at least we're allowed to continue working forward we'll jump, you know, we'll figure out how to do that when we get to that, that next step. Right now we have a, pr a great project that's ready to go out to construction and, you know, Inyo and Mono are steadfast in support of, of, you know, supporting getting that to construction. You know, it services Eastern Kern, all those areas, as well as um, the northern parts of Inyo and Mono County and Nevada and Idaho. So. Yeah, absolutely, and we also uh, value the partnerships that we have with Inyo Mono and other areas. When we need help, you're there, and <coughs> we want to honor that too as well. Anyone else have any comments from the audience? I have a question, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, chairman, chair, Chairperson, you know, I, I hear your um, uh, your concerns in by, you know, uh, directing staff as their recommendation for approval for this is is going to um uh help in any way uh you know your uh, your community indirectly and directly i think indirectly in that you're going to open up more capacity you're going to go from two lane roads to four lane roads mm -hmm. that's going to offer more safety opportunities and more 
transportation opportunities for uh, economic development, just plain and simple. Also, it's a safety issue. You take people that are traveling up to Mammoth, they're coming through, they're stopping into all of our communities. Um, you know, there's some tourism there. Uh, and you put them back on to basically a two-lane road like we've had for – it's a safety issue as well, as much as an economic development issue and anything else that, you know, that you can think of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's tourism, which is economic development. So, I mean, that's, that's just my thought. Those are my thoughts, and that's the way I look at this project, and I thought it was going to be – it's going to open up a lot safer traffic lanes. I understand mm -hmm. that when California uh, – Highway 14 – off of California City Boulevard used to be two lane. Then we went to a four lane and that trans that didn't work out very well either. Then we were able through a partnership to get a, a huge interchange in there that has really answered a lot of prayers. It's also made it uh, a lot safer. And then further as projects move up, we went from two lane to four lane. It's like we're not get it's like we're not getting it done. We're not filling in mm -hmm. the important pieces to make it a complete project. I, is that the way you're seeing it as well? Okay, that, that's just the way I've seen it. It's over many years that this has taken place. So we get so close to this point, mm -hmm. and then the brakes have to be thrown on. And truthfully, I understand this. You know, we've had briefings here. If you don't uh, uh, visit the gas tax, which we don't like to pay more taxes since, what, 1994? And you're not in putting up any kind of inflation rate. It's a, it, there's a diminishing return on your ability to use those, those monies. It's not going to go very far. Then the efficiencies in vehicles. Then the fact that there are some vehicles that just simply aren't paying. I mean, I could, this is like a soapbox moment for me. We can't, we, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. we, we've gotten here because of a number of other problems. And it's not going to be fixed overnight. And this is where it's come to roost, where we absolutely have no money to do anything. So, but yes, this would help us as well as them. It, we are all on the same roads. We're all on 395 at some point. We just touched 395 by, I think, a mile and a quarter. Uh, and people do come in to California City on 20 Mule Team Road on the, the dirt roadways. By the way, we'd like to talk to you about getting that paved someday. But anyway, <laughs> another story, another day. Um, but, uh, and also on 14, you know, if there's, there, if there's, there's a problem on 395, they're going to find somewhere in that pyramid to make their way around and nothing more important as when we had the incident on Highway 58 because you had to go through one up and down 178 to get on various roadways and there were people in Bakersfield that were just trying to get through the state to go to Arizona. So anyway, I digress. So. Um, <laughs> where we are today is because of this and, I, and if there's anything that we can do, I'm sure that we're, we keep a we're going to support you because I know you've supported us Thank many you. times. And we've, we're beneficiaries of that in the past. So. And, and sentiments are the same from Inyo and Mono County. Thank you, sir. And my, uh, my question Mayor uh, through the chair is um, it sounds like if we do not deprogram the project, then there will be insufficient funds for future projects that are also listed or that are expected to be funded. Yes, um, Director. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Director Cantu, um, essentially, uh, if we don't make a recommendation, the commission staff will do it for us. In fact, some of the larger regional agencies are opting for that because uh, probably a variety of reasons. I'm really speculating, but I think it's just uh, would take them too long to go through their various counties and fully vet, you know, uh, what their priorities would have to be in light of the new situation for us our priorities were stated very clearly when you adopted our, our tip uh, in November uh, we simply in this exercise embrace the the priorities that, that were stated then um, and so we're fine also uh, madam chair um, and to the directors just uh, just so you understand to the ready to list uh, status that um, District 9 staff is speaking of. Uh, it is the case that segment one is ready to go to construction, but uh, for Freeman Gulch, excuse me, but also be clear that segment two uh, will not be ready to list, that it's uh, being concluded in light of our circumstances at what they would call 30% completion on right away work that's being done. So uh, that one's being shelved uh, with the understanding that it's not ready to list. So please understand that. Uh, and Thank so you. again, with that, we, we ask for your 
um, action this evening as stated previously. So, so thank Chairman, you. So Chairman Woods, so am I then to assume that we agreed on a priority list? And based on that priority list, you've made, you're have you making That's this what unfortunate recommendation tonight. Correct. That's yes, correct. sir. Okay. That's correct. Um, if there are no <coughs> other comments from the public or up here, um, I look for an emo motion to approve attachment A and direct staff to submit the revised 2016 Regional Transportation Improvement Program Capital Improvement Plan to the CDC by February 26, 2016, regretfully. I move. Second. Okay, this is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, moving on to item number six, board members. Uh, oh, no, there's nothing there. Um, item number seven, Caltrans report. Uh, Ms. Miller? Good evening. I'm going to start off with four projects that I've been uh, reporting on for quite some time and then I'm going to end with um, just some upcoming shop projects that are in the pipeline that I'll probably be reporting on later in the in the year uh, but I just wanted to give you a, a heads up on those so we've got the Lost Hills replacement on State Route 5 between Laredo Overcrossing and State Route 5 and uh, 46 the separation there uh, scheduled work for upcoming weeks includes concrete placement, hot mix asphalt placement, and then a possible uh, traffic switch and nighttime lane closures will be in place uh, while they do K-rail removal and traffic switching. During these times, I-5 will be reduced to one lane as permitted. Um, the anticipated completion date for that project is uh, January of next year. The Bakersfield Bridge Preventative Maintenance on State Route 204, Golden State Avenue between 99 and 178. Um, and the project is right now in winter suspension and due to um, a doing hot mix asphalt is not conducive to cold weather. Of course it has been getting a little warmer but so they're anticipating that possibly they'll resume work in, in March. Um, the activities that when they do resume work will include placement of scaffolding, starting of the bridge paint work. Uh, there could, however, be some lane closures due to those activities. The Sunny Lane pedestrian overcrossing on, uh, one, on 178. Um, the contractor is still working to install bridge fence and completing the drainage system. There is some electrical pole. Uh, there is an electrical pole that um, is causing some delay that they need to um, uh, relocate. The anticipated completion date is March, so that's around the corner. So hopefully that pole won't cause too much more problems and they'll get that resolved. The eastbound Sand Canyon, um, that's on um, State Route 58, um, and it's between um, Mona Lift and the um, Sand Canyon Road overhead to Cash Creek Bridge. The contractor is installing bridge false work. Eastbound on and off ramps are still closed and will remain closed until the project is completed, which is June of this year. And then coming um, online soon is the Famoso State Route 4699 Bridge. Uh, and that's a bridge replacement at that location. We're hoping to advertise this summer. It's a shop project. So um, hopefully once we advertise, get out to bid. So maybe by the end of the year, I, we can be in construction. Uh, the gap closure rehab, that's rehabilitation on State Route 58 in the city of Bakersfield from State Route 5899 separation <coughs> to Cottonwood Road. That's a shop project that we're going to be listing uh, in spring, so uh, not too far away, a couple more months of this year. And then the Kern Avenue pedestrian overcrossing, that's an ADA compliance upgrades um, on State Route 99 at the Kern Avenue pedestrian overcrossing. Uh, shop project, it's in um, 
Uh, that they're still working on the design and right away, but they should be ready to list also in spring of this year. So those are some things that I'll be reporting on hopefully um, the next six months or so that we've got a contractor and when we're going to go to construction. And that's all I had unless there's um, questions that I can try and answer. Thank you very much, Gail. Thanks. Um, at this time we'll move on to item number eight. Uh, Executive Director's Report, Mr. Hakimi. Good evening, Madam Chair and uh, Directors. Uh, Kern Cog hosted with Caltrans a local assistance workshop here yesterday. It was very well attended by all your uh, member agencies. We had over 35 participants. Thank you to Caltrans District 6, and he's no longer in the room, but Caltrans District 9 also attended. The CT next CTC meeting is March 16th and 17th in Irvine. Kern Cog will have staff there if any of you would like to attend. Also, directly after the CTC me meeting ends at noon on the 17th will be the STIP hearing for the southern por <coughs> portion of the state. We are in the southern portion where they will consider all the region's plans to make the cuts that you you just acted on a few minutes ago. And Kern, Kern Cog will have five minutes to present uh, their step. The Hoskins Interchange, which is just south of Panama Lane and just north of 119, new interchange built by the city of Bakersfield. The ribbon cutting is scheduled for March 11th. The seventh daily Amtrak train would, uh, will be added from Bakersfield to Oakland coming this spring, and it will be a, for those of you that travel on Amtrak, it will be a direct train with no bus transfer, so that's good news. One, one more direct route. And finally, for this agenda, Kern Cog staff participated alongside Shafter and Wasco, and county staff participated in the Kern for HMF presentation to the High Speed Rail Authority Board earlier this week, and it went very well. Subject to your questions, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Anyone have any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Hakimi. Uh, we'll move on to item number nine, member statements. On their own initiative, council members may make a brief announcement or brief report on their own activities. In addition, council members may ask a question of staff or the public for clarification on any matter, provide a reference to staff or other resources for factual information or request staff to report back to the council at a later meeting concerning any matter. Furthermore, the council or any me member thereof may take action to direct staff to place a matter of, uh, of business on a future agenda. Do anyone have anything, uh, any member statements? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move into the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, did you have you gotten everyone uh, on for the roll call? Okay, I'm sorry. Do you want to adjourn and go right into it? We're just going. Okay, I'm sorry. As you were, um, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. Now I'll call to order the Kern Council of Governments, um, Thursday, February 18th, 2016, at 6, actually at 7.02 or 7.03 p.m. Um, Madam Clerk, could you roll call us, please? Good. All right. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter, not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information or request staff to, place to report back to the council at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Uh, please state your name and address for the record prior to making any presentation. Do we have any public comments from the floor? Seeing none, we'll move to the consent agenda and opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are uh, considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern, 
COG staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Anyone in the public have any questions on any of these items on the consent calendar or anyone up here on the, uh, the board? Seeing none, um, I will. I'm seeking a motion for approval of the consent calendar. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Morris. Yes. Smith. Yes. Wood. Yes. Pasquale. Yes. Rookie. Yes. Cantu. Yes. Bauer. Yes. Sprouts. Yes. Fryer. Yes. Wigman. Yes. Couch. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we're moving to item nine. There are no items for five through uh, eight. Executive Director's Report, Mr. Hakimi. Good evening again, Madam Chair, Chairwoman and Council Members. I just have a handful of items. Tomorrow is the Regional Policy Council conference call at 9 a.m. If you would like to call in, let me know. It was originally scheduled for a um, video conference. It now is a conference call. March 2nd is the San Joaquin Valley Policy The conference call is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. March 2nd is the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council Valley Voice Trip to Sacramento. If anyone else would like to sign up for that, please let me or Laurie know. March 3rd is the Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony at the Seven Oaks Country Club. Uh, if you haven't yet RSVP'd, please talk to Laurie or have your staff talk to Laurie. We're already well over 130 and we can only hold about uh, 200 and we're we're way ahead of where we were last year March 31st to April 1st is the Cal Cog Regional Issues Forum in Monterey please let me know if you'd like to attend and uh, it's form 700 time again and as a reminder um, you you have to fill out your form 700s for your the agency that you represent you can use the same form we just need original signatures on the form you turn into us and they are due before april 1st and in your folders tonight is a timeline from february through june our outreach efforts and article from today's Bakersfield California talking about uh, former state senator Dean Flores <coughs> being appointed to the Air Resources Board and if you remember the Air Resources Board has jurisdiction over our sustainable community strategy and of course they have jurisdiction over the air quality issues in the valley so it's nice to have someone from the valley on the Air Resources Board there's a copy of the presentation from the Public Utilities Commission that you received earlier. A flyer about the Electric Utility Rates Forum being held on Tuesday, March 22nd at 5 p.m. at the Kern County Board of Supervisors Chambers. A schedule of cash disbursements for January. A letter that uh, r regarding the CEQA guidelines a white paper on the future of uh, travel demand and highway capacity for next generation vehicles and community voices piece from the Bakersfield Californian authored by council member Bob Smith from Bakersfield uh, a presentation that the RPAC received that was very well received on Ridgecrest's median art project reminder about your form 700s and finally a copy of a letter from Kern for HMF that's the heavy maintenance facility that went to the chairman of the high-speed rail authority subject to your questions madam chair that concludes my report thank you very much mr. Hakimi let's not forget the 700s are due uh, um, anyone have any comments up here or questions 
Okay. At this time, we'll go to member statements on their own initiative. Council members may make a brief announcement or a brief report on their own initiative. In addition, council members may ask a question of staff or the public for clarification on any matter, provide a reference to staff or other resources for factual information, or request staff to report back to the council at a later meeting concerning any matter. Furthermore, the council or any member thereof may take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. Do we have any items of business or anything to discuss? Chairman Wood. I'd like yes, to make a, uh, an announcement. Yes, um, sir. McFarland will be having their first um, McFarland USA half marathon for those of us that like to run. I personally like to ride, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, as you can tell. But uh, <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, it'll be May 1st, I believe, uh, Saturday, um, during our Cinco de Mayo celebration. We're kind of, I guess, m m putting them together. Uh, so it'll be our first ever marathon. We'll have a... Uh, Definitely a lot of the runners, uh, some from the movie, Coach White will be there. And so it'll be an exciting event for a small, our small community and uh, would like to extend the invitation to all the other communities in Kern County. And in Yomano and all the other counties that would like to them. Oh, thank uh, you, that sounds exciting. Uh, I have a comment, if I can add to that one. If we wanna go see them run, if we can all drive our big vehicles <laughs> over there and get the... <laughs> Price oil up again. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that would I help a lot kind of, of things. There. I think there's pretty much everybody in this entire valley is yeah. kind of dependent on that. Uh, yep. I mean, even our company, we, we did in the last three days, we've lost 300 jobs again. Wow. And uh, it's just not, it's just not good out there, and it, it kind of affects everybody, restaurants and theaters and. Not just you. No, it's just it's not just California. us, right? It's it's everybody, and on top of that, I'd like to thank uh, Supervisor Couch, senior at the um, speaking on behalf of Councilman Cryer at the uh, the Taft uh, Chamber of Commerce Awards the other night. It's good to see. You. I didn't get to talk to you because everybody was kind of pulling you every which direction, but it's good to see you there. Thank you. Anyone else have any other comments? Oh, we have no closed session, so I'll make a, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn uh, this meeting with the next meeting being held March 17th, 2016. You probably will. S second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Have a good evening. Thank Be you. Drive safe. Thank you.